Hi guys, this is David, and you are more than welcome again to Mool A RPA. Congratulations, you are in the second part of this series or playlist. Now, just a recap of this playlist. We are trying to know how to get UiPath up and running in our system. We are beginners. We don't know where to download UiPath, but right now we know because we have watched the previous video. So um, if you're just jumping up on this material or on this video, on this content, you might want to refer to video number one to keep to be on track. All right, so in video number one, we talked about registering on the UiPath Cloud, which I believe every one of us should be registered on the UiPath Cloud. And right now we know where and how to download um, download and install the UiPath Studio, which I believe every one of us should um, know that. So by now, our download should be completed by now. So if I head over to my downloads, you can see my download is done. I have my .msi file and I can actually run this to have my studio in my local computer. But that's for a later video. The next video we'll be talking about installing the UiPath Studio. For now, um, there was something I talked about in the previous video. I talked about services. So I told you that when you sign up to the UiPath Cloud, you would be you will be having um, a couple of services like the orchestrator, the test manager, the action center, and then the UiPath apps. So if you if you look here, you can only see one of this um, service here, just the UiPath apps. But unfortunately, you can't see other things, and you might be wondering, oh, David told you about this. Where can I find the orchestrator? Where can I find the test manager? Where can I find this? Exactly. So um, just in case, I, I just I just added the UiPath apps, you know, of the video. So the UiPath apps is part of the services, you know, but um, fortunately for us, it comes automatically by default when you uh, it, it, it doesn't have to be in, an, in, in, in any jacket. So it's just there. So you can see the UiPath apps. It's visible. So for so. So let's get started now. So for you to have an orchestrator, for you to have an orchestrator, you must have a tenant because I want you to see a tenant as a, as a jacket where the orchestrator sits in. So a tenant is used in keeping things separated. So let's say you have like different units in your organization, you would want to keep, um, and these different units have different orchestrators. So you want to keep things separated um, by having them in, 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 in multiple tenants. So just, you know, just in case for, for, for learning purposes, I would advise students to go ahead and Google what, type on Google, what is a UiPath tenant? And you can see the definition here, multi-tenancy enables you to isolate data with only one instance of an orchestrator. Just as I said, this feature facilitates automating different departments from your company and ensures the desired authorization of orchestrator data per department. So, so that's it, your definition for a tenant. So let's just go ahead and create a tenant. So a tenant is more like a jacket that helps you keep things um, keeps um, uh, things separated just in case you want to have multiple orchestrator, orchestrators, you want to have this orchestrator sit in different tenants. So head over back to your UiPath cloud and if you want to create a tenant, you can do that by clicking the admin link here. That's if, um, if you, you, you can do that by clicking the admin link or you could scroll down here for the first time just because you are setting up your um, UiPath Cloud for the first time, you've seen this link here that says create new. So maybe if you already have a an existing tenant and you still want to go ahead and create another one, probably you shouldn't be seeing this link again because it's not your first time, then you will have to go through the admin link here. So every one of us, go ahead, click the create new. So if once you click the create new, it takes you up to this page. Um, 
just to you know to to show you that what i'm saying is correct if you go back again and click the admin link it takes you to this same page so whatever whatever link you want to go through so you can either use the create new or use the admin so i'm going to use the create new so hit the create new and you want to create a tenant when you when you come into the create new when you come, when you come into the um tenants tenants um management page you would see that your ipad automatically gives you a default tenant and it's disabled so don't enable this just leave it up that way i want you guys to create a tenant from the scratch so that you can you can you can know why and um, why things are where they are so i want you to see things from the scratch so uh, there is this there's this plus sign here and you want to hit the plus sign it says create a new tenant and then you want to give your tenant it gives you a field where you can give your tenant a name so give your tenant a name so you can call it mol students and give your tenant a region select your region from here region that best suits you so i'm going to take europe and you can give your tenants a color this is just for customization just in case you have multiple tenants you want to identify easily and keep things um, identified so just give it a, a color or something or you can leave it as no color i want to give mine a color so I'm just gonna give it pink and I hit the next button. And these are the services I talked about. So remember I talked about orchestrator, action center. Now this is the actions, this is orchestrator. And I also talked about test manager. So you wanna check test manager or you're more than welcome to check every other thing. So go ahead and check every other thing. And then you hit the next button. And for the license allocation, I want you to leave things just the way they are and you hit create and you get this pop-up message that says tenant mol students create operation started okay so um why the tenants is being created you can actually head back to your uipath cloud and you will start seeing those services you don't need to be on this page for for the tenants to get created successfully it's the operation has actually started on cloud so go ahead click the uipath logo here and it take you back to your UiPath Cloud homepage, and you can see, and you're already starting to see things. You're already you're already starting to see the services. So you can see we have the orchestrator here. We have the you have the test manager, and you know you can hit the refresh button, and you will see more 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 services come up because I'm sure it's still yeah. So now you can see this three dot signs here that says like more. And then you can see all other stuff like you indicated while creating the tenants. These are all other services, integration service, data service, AI center. We're going to be reading, um, you, you, we're going to be reading, reading up on all these things as time goes on. But um, for now, we just want the basic things, which is the orchestrator, the test manager, and, and your UiPath apps and the action center, which you have by default. So that's fine. So if you have gotten through all the steps without any issues cheers and congratulations if you have also had some issues don't worry that's fine it's learning experience so cheers to you it means you're learning better i believe the more errors you make the more you learn so i always like it of when i always like it when people uh when students or people are making errors making mistakes you know it means they are learning if you're not making mistakes you're not learning so if you have any questions you can email me on the email in my description masteroflogic.mol at gmail.com and if you want to you know you can check out the description for more information about uh, this um, video thanks for watching bye